much. Thank you. Uh, before we start, let me quickly introduce you. I have three very impressive people in front of me. Uh, Nadine, you and your BA in film and directing in, from the Egyptian uh, Higher Film Institute in 2001. Since then, you have directed several fiction films, commercials, TV series, and music videos. Your debut film, Chaos Disorder, uh, won the jury prize at the Dubai International Film Festival in 2012, uh, and the Best Film Award uh, at the Oran Film Festival in Algeria and the Muscat International Film Festival in Oman. Uh, you have directed several TV commercials and music videos, and your critically acclaimed TV series, Seventh Neighbor, uh, was met with a huge popular success in the, in the MENA region. Uh, in addition to that, uh, to your work as a director, um, you have worked over 10 years as a second unit and first assistant director on several TV commercials, with renowned uh, directors, including uh, Rob Sanders and uh, the Egyptian director Ali Ali, uh, as well as uh, international feature films produced by DreamWorks, Art and Pate. So that was a quick little, uh, but pa informatively packed uh, introduction to Nadine. Uh, and uh, I can see that we have some um, viewers with us. So welcome, welcome. I'm just introducing our, uh, yeah, participants here today. I'm going to move on to Martin. Martin, we did meet you briefly yesterday. So who, people that was with us yesterday or that will see the meet the expert sessions from yesterday will have uh, some idea who Martin is. But for the, our new uh, yes, Martin is the executive produ producer at Anagram. He is one of the founders of the company and uh, you were the CEO of Anagram uh, from 2006 to 2014. Uh, you have an extensive training at EAVE, ACE, and PAP and Media Exchange. Uh, you're the managing director and owner of Apollon Build of uh, Film since 86 and Lund Records from 95 to 2003. Uh, you were a member of the Swedish Producer Association Board from 2001 to 2013, and the head of development and production of film at Tre Vänner uh, between 99 and 06. And Mohamed, you are a award-winning Egyptian screenwriter and producer who has written, produced, and co-produced nearly 30 feature films in Egypt, the US and the UK, uh, and in the Arab wor world in general. Uh, in 2013, uh, your Screen International named you uh, the only Arab amongst 30 leaders in film production. And you were also cho cho chosen a couple of years later by Variety uh, on a top list of 10 names you need to know in the Arab film fi industry. In 2018, you were presented by Hollywood Reporter with the Arab Cinema Center Arab Cinema Personality of the Year. And in 2019, you were invited as a member of the Academy's Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences uh, in the Producers Branch. Uh, you've also participated in, uh, your films have participated in major film festivals, including Cannes, Venice, Berlin, Sundance, Toronto, and Locarno. And you have won more than 80 international awards. So like I said, we do have a very impressive group of people in front of me. Uh, so let's just jump in quickly about in the land of wonder, because we met you, we here at MAF, so to speak, met you uh, when you won the grant for the development or the development grant of what was then called MAF uh, Market Forum in 2016. So this work in progress session is just a little quick uh, update on what is going on with the land of wonder, how the process has gone, uh, what challenges you might have faced. Um, and just maybe some knowledge you can spread to aspiring filmmakers and producers uh, that are also looking into developing independent films. So Nadine, could you perhaps just give us a little brief um, about The Land of Wonder? What is it about? Uh, what's going on? Uh, sure. Uh, for, uh, for people who don't know what The Land of Wonder is about, it's an adaptation of Al Lewis Carroll's uh, Alice in Wonderland. Uh, it is set in Cairo, Egypt, uh, the, the land of wonder, as I call it. <laughs> um, uh, and the land of wonder talks about a 10 year old school girl. Uh, her father works as a, this is like a brief, quick uh, um, uh, synopsis. 
Her father works as a magician. One day after school, uh, she goes home, finds uh, her uh, house door open and finds Samir the rabbit that her father uses in his uh, magic tricks, rushing out of the house, talking on a cell phone, being late for something. Uh, the girl decides to uh, run after him. They jump into um, uh, a bus that speeds up and falls into a sinkhole, which, which is the rabbit hole. Uh, the girl uh, finds herself in Cairo, but uh, a little bit different Cairo, the land of wonder. Uh, it's the same reality of Cairo, the, the, the craziness of Cairo, but uh, with a little bit of twist. Uh, she, she encounters and meets uh, a few characters like the Mad Hatter, the, um, the uh, Mimi, the Tyrant, uh, the Queen of Hearts. Uh, and in her journey, as she's searching for Samir in, in Cairo, the new Cairo that she finds, she also finds the courage to face a lot of her fears and faces Mimi uh, in a trial for a non-existing um, uh, crime. Uh, and as the trial is happening, the girl starts growing in size and she wakes up, finds herself back home, thinking that this was all a dream, but finds uh, her adopted street cat smiling at her like the Cheshire cat. Yeah. Uh, and the Land of Wonder is uh, actually um, uh, a, a, a very personal uh, uh, film for me. Um, uh, it, it speaks about this Cairo and about uh, this crazy Cairo and how, how the imagination that we lost somehow in, in our society, uh, uh, I'm trying to bring it back again through this crazy Cairo, through this, this adventure and to kids and to family. And it's a very personal uh, uh, project. Uh, it's, I've been working on it actually more than we started uh, with Hazi actually since 2014, if I remember right. Uh, <laughs> and this project is growing with us and developing with us, visually uh, developing as an idea, as a script, uh, as an approach, as, an, as production. And I think this process is very positive to the result that we want to reach in the end. Uh, it's not an easy project uh, in implementing it, uh, but at the same time, uh, what we're working on and what we're doing is studying it uh, from, from uh, all aspects, all directions, and finding the right place to put this project in uh, with the vision that I have for Cairo. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, when I first read about this project uh, before, when I started working here, I'm so intrigued that the Alice in Wonderland was one of my favorite books and films when I grew up and I have a long, still going ongoing dream to go to Cairo one day. So I oh, can't okay. wait to see it. Um, I'm thinking Mohammed will leave us maybe shortly. So I should, I want to ask you how you first came across uh, not only Nadine, but the script and why this script spoke to you as a producer. Sorry, let me just unmute myself. Uh, well, I, I heard about this project from um, Nadine and Noura Sheikh, one of the two writers um, involved in, in, in the script with Nadine, of course. Um, and uh, it seemed like a crazy yet very, um, you know, a fun a film to make. I, I didn't know back then what I was getting myself into because obviously I didn't realize the complexity um, of, uh, of not, necessarily just developing you know the project and writing the script but the complexity of of making such a production actually um, a reality because it's uh, it's something that I think has never really been tried in our region uh, the idea of uh, mixing live action with 3d animation um, in a feature film and um, and I think that it's um, it, it's it's probably the best way to tell the story, and 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 I think that it's um, um, definitely doable. We just uh, we I think we just realized that that it's going to take a lot more um, to bring all the pieces of this puzzle together from a production point of view, and hence 
um, Martin, um, as our Swedish co-producer and partner, was um, you know when we first started to talk about it, and uh, with Nadine, um, uh, we we realized that we need to figure out a way of how we can uh, you know use the expertise of um, our European partners, whether it be in animation and post-production. Um, uh, the Swedish partners, as well as our uh, French partner, who is, um, uh, you know, a, a company uh, that is also quite active in animation and has done other animation projects in the past. Um, and um, it took us a really long time to figure out the best way, the best techniques, um, you know, for, for making this happen and also how to and this is something we're still trying to figure out how to actually, um, you know, raise the money because uh, it's obviously a very expensive production. But what we've been able to do with the money that we received from um, the uh, market forum in MAP was that we, uh, the grant we won, we were able to develop the script further with it and also um, put together the initial uh, seed money for actually shooting parts of the film. So, so what we've uh, what we've done is we've managed to shoot two days as um, a proof of concept or a test just to try out the technique of live action mixed with animation and uh, and see the end result and figure out as we go along uh, how we can improve on it and how we can make it better and how we can be more efficient. Um, now, it hasn't been easy to, uh, you know, to build on that at this stage, but we are working. We are trying to put together a strategy. Uh, and I feel like um, the market in our region is changing. Uh, it's growing. Uh, I feel like there are more opportunities now for um, for films that have a high uh, potential for theatrical distribution and theatrical um, uh, income because of obviously because of the growth of countries like Saudi Arabia in the region. Um, but also because I feel like maybe Martin can talk about this more. Uh, that I feel also there's more appetite in, um, you know, in the West and in Europe for, uh, and certainly also in the U.S. for um, for good films coming out of this region, you know, good films that tell stories that could appeal to a wider audience uh, beyond our region. And uh, and I think this film needs that, um, that kind of ambition uh, to be able to not just be made, but also to be able to travel and uh, reach its audience. Um, and and uh, you know I'd love to pass the floor to Martin also to you know to give us a little bit of insight from from his side um, and um, yeah and I'm and I'm and I'm confident that you know one day we're hopefully soon we'll be able to get the cameras rolling uh, for production. Thank you so much, Mohammed. That was really uh, really information packed uh, section. But uh, I also agree that it's um, it's a. Uh, a very interesting and smart move to have a, a story that, like Wonderland, that is so well known, uh, both in the MENA region, but also, out, of course, outside the MENA region, as a way of um, creating a bridge between um, the uh, Arab-speaking films and, and Western audience. Um, Martin, um, I guess I have this similar question to you, uh, and uh, maybe you can work on what Mohammed was speaking about. Yeah, <clears throat> well, we, I, before that uh, market forum that we took place, if it was in 2017 or 16, uh, I had, I had gotten the presentation of the, the, um, the, the project from Nadine and Muhammad. And, and I liked it immediately because it was, for me, it was original and unusual to come out of that region a family film and you know with a story that was you know as equally well known to the Euro Europeans and Scandinavians as to maybe people from the MENA region <clears throat> so I was drawn to it by that and I also was drawn to it with a with a energy that came into the about with the story and how it was a live action mixed with animation so that was and then when Nad I met Nadine in in Malmo for the first time and we pitched it we just clicked quite well I think and both um, personally but also in the sense of you know that this is a project that we would love to realize and we were really happy to to that we won uh, the seed money to to uh, help them develop it further then also from the first start we knew it was going to be a, a challenge to to finance and to 
and to realize it, but um, uh, you, no one of us got into the film business because it was easy, because it's, it's something that you just love and aspire to get, raise fantastic product with. <clears throat> so, um, and then I, I followed the, the we, we, we did some research in Sweden and Scandinavia to what, what uh, parts of the production that could come from our region. And uh, maybe there would be some um, parts when it comes to the animation part, uh, or maybe supervising there or some other post-production part. Obviously the, the shoot would be in Cairo and, and maybe also a big part of the animation would come from there, but there could be uh, elements that could come from Sweden or other, other countries in Scandinavia. And then if, when the film gets further to uh, realization, maybe we also we could get further funding from Sweden and maybe one other Scandinavian country. That's the ambition anyway. So it's a lot of fun, I think. No, thank you. And um, I mean, to create a film like uh, the Land of Wonder, uh, in the Land of Wonder, it's, um, I can imagine it takes a lot of imagination, but uh, I don't think any of us in our wildest imaginations could have thought of a pandemic sweeping over the world like it has. Uh, <laughs> it's a bizarre um, upside down version of Wonderland maybe. Uh, has that affected you, Nadine and Martin? In, I can imagine that it has, but in which ways has that um, affected the, um, the production and process of this film? And you want to answer, Nadine? Sorry? Uh, I didn't hear you, Martin, sorry. Oh, do you want to answer that, maybe? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, uh, right before the pandemic, we were we were done with the with the proof of concept uh, video. Uh, right before it, yeah, yeah, a few months before it. So we were planning to start the next step, but of course, with the pandemic, everything got postponed uh, for for a year now, I think. Is it a year? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is this is from our side, yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you. When uh, Martin was with us yesterday, um, we talked a little bit about uh, the nature of co-producing and co-producing um, transnationally uh, as uh, you have done. Uh, I also had a discussion yesterday with Andreas Roxian, who is a producer here in Sweden, who is also uh, familiar with co-producing, not only internationally, but specifically with Arab world. And we were talking about the benefits, which I can imagine are plenty, <laughs> but also the difficulties that can come from a co-production. Um, and I was, because Martin teased a bit of that yesterday, but we he had to save the goods for today. <laughs> and also now when we have Muhammad with us, maybe you can talk about it in a, as producers, how the nature of co-production works and uh, the benefits and challenges that comes with that. I mean, I, if I just start quickly, because uh, I talked a little bit about it yesterday, I think, you know, um, uh, the strength of co-production is obviously that you could, uh, when when they work well, you can really bring together creative forces from different cultures and, and uh, countries and, and, and add the strength that you can bring from that country. It could be financial or it could be creative or it could be uh, technical, of course. Um, uh, and also um, uh, bring parts, to, new parts of the story to make it even stronger uh, the, and the realization of the project can be a bit more than you imagined uh, in many different ways. Then what I touched on on the obstacle side is that if there are big differences in uh, how uh, uh, costs of production and so on, it can be if, if we have support in Sweden that has to be spent here for as an example, the uh, cost of labor and the cost of uh, production is higher here than maybe in, in Cairo. So maybe it's not worth as much uh, the, the money that you have to spend in, in our country than if they had been able to get it for free to spend in Egypt, as an example. Uh, so there could be both positives and, and, and obviously some obstacles when it comes to it. Do you want to add something there, Mohammed? Well, uh, I, I agree with you 100%. Um, 
that you know there, there are definitely ways where it could be more um, constructive, where, where the co-production can be set up in a way that is more constructive and where, where it's not just about finding a little bit of extra money, uh, where there is actually a real co-production, where there, uh, uh, there, there is talent you know, co-producing or, or co cooperating or collaborating from different um, co-production territories, either in front or behind the camera, when um, when the, when it's also a story or or a type of production that lends itself naturally to to co-productions as opposed to um, you know to a film that um, is very local in its scope and and uh, and also ambition. Mm -hmm. uh, so on the other hand, there can be a lot of complexity coming from co-productions. Um, if it's not planned right, and if there's not a, you know one producer that is tying all the knots together, especially when multi-party co-productions, if you have, so for example, three or four different territories, uh, it can get really complicated in terms of not just the legalities and the paperwork, but also in terms of orchestrating all of that. And I think that's when you need uh, a lead producer that is really able to tie all the knots together and is really good at communication, because I think that often co-productions fail because there's just not enough communication between all the parties and uh, and when it's not very clear what the roles are um, and responsibilities and expectations from each party in, in that co-production. Um, and obviously the spending requirements is, is uh, sometimes um, complicated because it, it sometimes makes the film more expensive mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and can also interfere with the director's creative choices. So when, when you know that you have to uh, have a certain number of um, HODs, you know, or people either in front of or behind the camera to reach a certain number of points to meet your cultural test requirements, then you you automatically have to start interfering with the, with the director's creative choices. And, uh, and you have to find a way to do that where, you know, where you don't make the director feel like they're being imposed uh, on with a certain choice of, um, you know, of uh, department head or, or, or technician or um or talent so that's you know that's the the complexity of it but it's also i think the only way for some films to get made because we don't have enough sources of fin financing and funding in the arab world um to be able to uh finance some of the films we are make we are making here because they're not popular or they're sometimes not accepted as much locally either for reasons related to censorship or for reasons related just to the nature of our market uh so i don't think we can live without co-productions in some instances, but I think we, we really should uh, try to work harder on, on, you know, really building the right strategy and the right communication channels to make these co-productions a success. Thank you so much, Mohamed and Martin. Uh, these talks and uh, these work in progress and all our industry dates programs are meant for, or we are trying to uh, help aspiring filmmakers and producers to get a clear vision of how it is and get an, have an honest conversation about these things. And especially for when we post this on our social media, there will be just people like me <laughs> that have no idea about how film is made <laughs> and, and, and is not a filmmaker to get a um, idea of um, the process behind it is such a long, long process. Uh, I'm gonna turn to you now, Nadine, but I know that you might have to leave us, Mohammed. So I want to just, if if you have to do it, have the time Hi. to thank you so much for joining thank us. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a pleasure and I'm gonna say goodbye and let you continue and, and thank you so much for hosting. Thank you so Thanks much for joining us. It's really, I'm very happy. Uh, okay, so uh, Nadine, we talk about the process and we, talk, we just talked a bit about it in a more, um, uh, production type of way, <laughs> the more graspable parts of it. But I'm thinking as a director, where would you say that you are now in the creative process of this film? And how has that uh, journey been for you, uh, both before and after getting uh, this grand amongst others, probably? So um, could you tell us a bit yeah, more about Yeah, yeah sure. Um, I think I think I'm I'm very comfortable and happy with the creative process that is happening. Of course, I wish it would go faster. That's for sure. <laughs> but the process itself, I think we are moving and we're taking the right steps in the right direction creatively. Mm -hmm. And that, that means when, that when we did the proof of concept, it was an eye opener for me uh, on a creative side 
uh, for a lot of things. Technically, uh, uh, it made us understand uh, what are our limitations and problems technically, and what are the freedom that I can get with the technique that I am insisting on working on or, or not insisting, uh, holding on to. The idea of working with relocation uh, uh, with CGI uh, and not to lose the, the feel of the, of the city and the environment of the city. I don't want to lose it at all. So um, this process actually put us in, in the right direction uh, creatively and budget wise because also we, we somehow uh, found out that there are other approaches than the approach we did. So I think it's the right step for such um, uh, a complex technical film uh, that we need to, and I think we'll be going through other tests, but in a different sense before going actually in production. Uh, and this is the process how you develop uh, your your uh, point your visual point of view and everything else and the budget of course and everything else. So as I said in the beginning, I think we are moving in the right direction, doing the right steps. Uh, of course, I wish it would go faster. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> but as steps and direction, I think we are on the right track. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> I'm thinking um, uh, these types of grants, when I talked to um, Andreas and Sarah Ben Hassan yesterday, they uh, explained that the grants, the money is one thing. It's a big thing, but it's one thing. <laughs> uh, the, another thing is also the, the acknowledgement that the ideas and the film is good. <laughs> it's worth investing in. And that you can, if one, you get one grant, you can then later on show that to other places and that it creates a spiral uh, and they said this as a tips to future uh, people applying for these types of festivals what it can mean in more layers than just just the funding and i wonder do you have anything to add to that or do you have any uh, mostly from both of you you can choose who, can, who is going to go first but any just tips for the future filmmakers and producers that might be watching this, that either want to start spreading their ideas in these pitching development type of uh, funding programs or festivals, or how to then afterwards go about. Uh, so maybe you can start, Martin. Yeah, <clears throat> I think it's um, absolutely worthwhile uh, aspiring and, and applying to to these kind of. Um, uh, grants that are usually in combination with or are taking place at a film festival or, or something of that because it's a gathering of film people who um, um, who uh, can, I, can you can get new insights you can of course get uh, if you have, are lucky you might win some money but you also you can get new contacts and both with um, possible um, collaborators but also with other financiers so and uh, just an, as an example, we met for the first time at MAF, me and Nadine, on this project. And when we had pitched and then finally won, we were then, after that, invited to Dubai <coughs> to a similar uh, event. Uh, I think it was a year after or something like that, where, you know, you may, it's, <coughs> it's like you say, it, it's a step that leads to another step and you, you further your circles and you can pursue further um, which types of um, uh, uh, paths to the final financing you, you want to go and so on. So I, it's a definitely a, a way of, of um, I think it's a good way if you want to co-produce to, to do that. What you, would you say, Nadine? Sorry, I'm on mute. Yes, I totally, I totally agree with you. Uh, I, have, I have this... Um, uh, experience also with my first feature. So it went with me in my first feature and uh, in the land of wonder, the idea of uh, applying uh, and going to markets and pitching and working with co-production and networking and everything. And actually until now in, in, in both my projects, it was, uh, uh, it is and was uh, uh, a very important uh, step and eye opener uh, 
uh, both يعني a step and an eye opener for me as a filmmaker uh, it exposes me to to a lot of things uh, in the industry uh, and it opens my eyes to to actually see where my project is and to actually develop it find co-production and the support Uh, my first feature, without the support I had through uh, markets and funding, um, I wouldn't have been able to produce it because it, as, as this second film, it was always looked at as a very ambitious uh, project and I was still uh, didn't direct anything. So the, the uh, producers or the interest in the film was always on the edge. Uh, but by uh, going to markets and, and finding the support there through funds and markets, uh, there was this trust that was built uh, with production and me as a director and a filmmaker. So it helped me a lot to take this step and it's happening again in my second uh, feature. So uh, I think, yes, it's very important. Uh, and it's a uh, it's a lot of work. It's not a <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a lot of work, uh, but it's worth it. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, as You're I welcome. talked about this earlier, these sessions are meant to be a brief little uh, how's it going session to all. Uh, so and also a little insight in how the process looks in these types of um, uh, scenarios. We hear at MAF are really curious when we, after the grants are given, just to see what's going on and how everything has worked after that. So we're very, very grateful that you could join us today. If, do you, any of you have anything to add or is it if something you think that um, I've missed asking <laughs> you? No, not really, not from no, my not side. Really. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I had a bad internet. <laughs> okay, okay, I said Nadine, that is there anything you would like to add? Uh, In, in this uh, conversation that we have. Uh, no, um, I'm, I'm glad that we are participating in this uh, discussion uh, and I'm, uh, I hope it's helpful for everyone that's uh, joining us. And it really is. More. And Thank you very much. Hopefully when the land... And I saw Martin again. Mm, that was so nice. <laughs> It's been such a long time. Yes, <laughs> yes, we've had people in these yes, sessions exactly. for the first time too, so that's really fun to see, even if it's digitally. Yeah. And I really hope that uh, yeah. when the Land of Wonder comes out and we can see it, that we can see it in movie theaters again. And I will definitely be the be the first in line to see that film. So again, thank you, Martin and Nadine, and also Mohammed that left a bit early. I'm actually going to run in now and see the pitching session for, I think it's documentary uh, movies in happening in the other room right now. And that room is much more tense than this one. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm curious to go and see. But um, again, thank you so much, uh, Nadine and okay. Martin, and good luck with everything. Thank you. Thank It was you. Nice, nice to take part. Thank all the best. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye.